Okay. Hi, I'm Kathy. This is a sample of the pansy paintings we're going to focus on today. Although this particular one is a, a little complex and you might not want to make yours quite that large. I have some of the pansy flowers and you can see they're often purple, white, pink, uh, lavender. They, they are delicate and they have these wonderful leaves. So composing uh, you know, using a photograph, and uh, I'm going to just work from my two references um, of the pansies, and I have a sketch, so let me move around, and we'll start uh, with this first sketch I have, and so here, here it is, and you will see down at the bottom uh, my references, so if this is, if this is okay on the page, I think I get most of it there, not all of it, and I'll have some of the flowers. All right, so I have sketched this particular one. And right here, I'm gonna let this be the bottom where I have, uh, have them in a white pot. And I'm gonna make up a shadow of some of the things coming down. And the first thing I really wanna do is to work with some of my uh, colors. So on my palette, I'm gonna, I'm, I've just put, <laughs> boy, is that bright purple. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of the purple a little bit of the magenta, and a little bit of the rose matter. And I'll be working with those as my uh, brighter flower colors. You know, I might end up with a little bit of the blue um, in a few places. And of course, the flowers have the center of this bright yellow. So this is a aurelian here. And then my greens are obviously gonna be made up of my yellow green, because there is a lot of bright. I may have to put a little yellow in that. That's that skips green. This is my um, viridian. And obviously I have to mix burnt sienna or a red to dull that green down to get my darker greens. And I have a puddle down here that I can feed from. So those are the colors that I'll be working from. So, um, you know, the first thing I think would might be smart is just to stick my little round brush and, and put my um, yellow, <laughs> I wanna keep my yellow nice and fresh. And there's a hint of the orange in there. All right, so, oh, let me explain. This is, this is the um, three flowers, uh, one, two, three, that I uh, focused on for this little design. And these are, this is where I see the yellow, the yellow, all right? And that, that we wanna keep those nice and clean, so it's a good idea to uh, pop those in right now. So I put, I put that yellow in, all right. So my petals, I want to do um, those. I'm looking at my reference, and I start with this uh, uh, each petal, I, when I'm doing a flower like this, I'm talking about painting today and I haven't talked about designing the page too much, but I'll get to that with a second quick sketch maybe. All right, so this is not quite that bright. I need to, I need to wet that and lift. It's way too uh, bright. It's very pale as a matter of fact. So maybe what I'll do is use, I'll pick up from right here and apply it. Uh, into my next petal, and it gets very strong in color down in here. So I'm really using my reference to paint from, whereas in the painting I showed you to start with, I use the flowers as my reference. So live fly, <laughs> it's nice to have the real McCoy. It's nice to have the real flower to look at. Now this is the magenta, and it's a much stronger, brighter color. And I, I want that magenta to kind of fuzz and run right into this lighter color. So I try to leave a little separation when I'm doing uh, one petal to the next petal. And, um, you know, I could, spend, I could spend a lot of time just trying to suggest uh, I'm losing this light spot here. So I'll lift that up. And matter of fact, since I pointed out how I was a little too heavy over here, I'll just go ahead and lift it. Uh, I could really take a lot of time and, and make the flower larger 
and really blow up. I think I'm gonna wait and do some detail right in there when it dries. Um, I could put more into, uh, see, I told myself to let it dry and then, and then I didn't let it dry, did I? Okay, so there's where you, you learn from my mistakes. Don't put it in, if you want that, if you want those little patterns like that to show up, you can't do that when it's wet. You have to let it dry. So we'll put a little bit more color back in there, but I am going to let it dry. And it may take a second wash to finish that up. So I'm painting the color that I see. And this little petal is turned um, overlapped. At least that's the way I saw it there. So I'm going to let that be lighter and I'm just going to add some water next and let this all run together. All right. So do you put the water on first or do you put the water on last? Either way, will work just fine. This is so pale right here that I am just adding my, I still have pink on my brush and I'm just going to let that run together. And there's another little piece here and it looks like it's got a little lavender tinge to it. Uh, the drawing and the painting of the flower uh, are, and they're an entity. Now, obviously I'm not gonna leave that solid white, but I want to let that not run together. So, kind of wish I had just waited. Okay. So let's move to the next flower. And this one is very pale, that is very pale. And so we're just gonna put a, a very light wash of the pink, and that may be all we do. Now this has a shadow over it. I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the whole petal, and then I'll do a glazing of a shadow over that little shadow later when it dries. So it has a little purple to it. And, and I do see, sometimes you can put these lines in and they'll still, they'll still be there at the end. All right, so this is also a very pale wash. I wanna go back to a touch of the pink. And it's mostly water that I'm applying. Very pale. And next, this one has a lot of color in it. So I'm gonna start with the color. I'm gonna start with um, this magenta and a touch of the purple. I think that's the beauty of these little pansies. They're, they're little miniature paintings. They're so gorgeous. They have, um, uh, but you, see, you can already see that a lot of what I did in the first flower is kind of washed out now. So I do have to come back and brighten it up. Okay, this one, I have just observed what's going on and try not to bleed uh, into, you know, when I'm working wet. This should be a pink, a bit more pink here. I'm go into my rose matter there. You can see how nicely these three colors are working together the purple and the magenta and the rose matter. Right here, I just wet my brush and extended that to a lighter value. And I see it lighter here, I'm right there at that spot. So I'm, I'm pretty, my sketch is pretty close to the original uh, uh, reference. It's not exactly right, but it's close. And this, is going to be back to that um, rose matter. And I don't want it to bleed into that next petal over here, so try not to touch it. And I'm just overlapping a little bit. Now I'm going to let that, um, well, forgot to do this little spot right here. And it's also very pink. And this will start drying. And I can come back and do what I want to do because I can see I'm not as bright as I need to be. And this shadow needs to dry before I plop that in. So here I have another pale petal, 
pedal pedal <laughs> and you know what I did I saw that there was something going on here and I didn't want to leave that uh, it's it looks like there's a purple flower back there but uh, while I have this on my brush I'm just gonna I may turn it into a purple one but I wanted to have something going out of the design here so this uh, looks like I'm not sure if that's a set it should be a separate petal and I didn't make a line here but usually when there is a line there'll be a little bit of a shadow there and then this one starts very pale okay, I guess you can see the edge let me kind of wiggle this back and forth so you see my edges the perimeter uh, so this is still that rose matter this is getting a little darker and I'm on this petal right here, and then it starts getting um, more purple. So I pick up the purple. It's nice having the puddles already there for you if you know that you have a limited palette and you're only gonna use like six or seven colors. If you have your uh, colors there, then um, it's just a matter of, and hopefully the yellow was uh, dry since I started with the yellow and we didn't, contaminate them it's, it's really nice here the way um i'm gonna have to get really dark with the purple in this spot and um i know that i'm gonna have to come back and put purple in again and i'm just testing the waters here to see if this is going to stay i'm also paying attention to the center of this little guy um, that that uh, that pansy has a very specific center and I don't want to lose all my yellow there's just those little things going on that make it say that's what it is okay now I'm coming coming out and observing this is a lot of right brain and and my flower does go off the page here and and i added another petal in there so i'm going back to my magenta and blending that into the purple a little bit and it gets very light out here again i'm going to probably want to come back and redefine this will just be that soft under part and then we'll come back and put in the contrasty lines that we see. Okay, and there's a flip up of that little petal right here, which will actually be darker, but I can't paint it now. I have to let that dry. And I'm assuming this petal comes out light like the rest of them. All right, so I was pretty satisfied that that's suggesting uh, what I see right now. Maybe I got a little heavy here, but it looked a little heavy there. And I want to make that edge clean. Okay, do I have more pinks and purples? Yes, I've got to go back now to this one. I'm looking into the background, and uh, what what I began to see is that, uh, and I'm going to paint these leaves, but while I have this purple and pink on my brush, I want to wet some of this, uh, maybe the corners, at least down to about right here. Um, let's see, I don't know if you can see where I am, but I'm just looking at the edge and what's around here. This is going to be some green. Oh, there's another little flower there that I left out. But what I wanted to do was to pop in some color and then I'll um, uh, finish with more green. And, and that's just to suggest that there's more flowers back there. So maybe even in this corner. Um, where, where I I know there's going to be some greens. I just don't want to paint anything else. I'm just going to pick up some, put some color in there for contrast. And maybe just go here as well. Okay, I know I need to put green in, but I haven't started my greens. So now I need to start my greens, probably. And no, 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 I'm going to finish my flowers. Um, I'm going to test this one 
it's a little cool, but I think it's good enough to start my detail, to go back in with my detail. So along this, wow, there's some really pretty lines in here. And I just used the very tip of my brush. And that's, that's the nice thing about these little round watercolor brushes. Just use the tip and I want that little, I want that to be a little more defined. In other words, that yellow shape, the way to make that yellow shape more defined is to make the purple run into it. And then bring, this is a shadow coming on the bottom of, it's right here. And I need to switch to the magenta because the rest of this is more of a magenta color. Boy, that's pretty bright on my brush right now. What I'll do is I'll put it down, I'll put some over here, and then I think I'll just switch and take another little round brush. And this has just water on it. And then I'll soften that so that it's uh, bringing the color out but getting a little lighter as it goes. And then these little tiny lines that you can barely see um, will help. Let me see, just snitch a little off the end of that brush. So I wanted to do what was appearing here on the edge. I hope you can see that. Uh, just by pulling that in. Boy, you see, I could get really caught up in some detail. And it's kind of like going back and putting feathers on a bird. Uh, just doing a little bit of dry brush or little tiny lines. I sense that maybe, I don't know that I have to do this, but maybe it needs to be there. There's a bit of a line there. Okay, maybe I need to put a little more of this lovely color in here. Okay, I sense that. Now, I'll put it here, and I need to get to my leaves. Um, I wanted my yellow to show up, and that was really a white piece, and this was a white piece. And there is not a white piece right there. <laughs> That's a pink piece. And the, again, these little lovely little lines are coming out. So that's suggesting that. And I didn't want this to be quite so abrupt. So let me go back with my water and soften that up. And I still feel like when this dries one more time that I will come back in and put a little more dark in the center around that yellow. So here I need to go a little darker. You can see how dark that is. That's, that's lost its definition now. So we're gonna have to wait. Now I'm gonna put this shadow in next. And that shadow seems to be purple, but it's not a real dark purple. So working in these beautiful lavenders, pinks, purples, we really can have fun with the pansies. Uh, do have the contrast of that lovely yellow in the center and the green leaves, the yellow green leaves. This has some vein work in it, but I'm gonna wait on that as well. I'm gonna get a little darker here. So it's almost like three layers it's, it's gonna take to get these flowers exactly right. But uh, just be patient. Try not to put it all in the first time. That's what I, I, I've, I've learned my lesson and yet I sometimes don't, I, I've learned my lesson so many times, I keep learning my lesson. Um, I don't know about you, but ooh, this has a little shadow here. That's kind of nice, just barely. And so I need, this one has lost its beautiful pink. Um, I have the pink here. I could put a little more pink in both of those. So I'm, I think it's just a matter of my picking up the magenta and putting it in. Uh, because your color will fade and then maybe I'd still have to come back and do that purple. This has got a little shadow on the edge of it. Maybe it's not as important. And then I'll just take my water on this little brush and extend it. 
I love that. I love being able to do that. This too needs a bit more drama. And there was a little edge I was supposed to come back and, and deal with. Let's see here. Lost. Oh, this little, this little guy. Oh yeah, I can do that now. I want to put in a little pink and then I just want to take my water. And I want to keep that edge very light. And then I think that it, it calls for a bit more shadow right underneath. See, that's a rolled back petal. Okay, this, this needs a little more defining. And a little more dark here. Okay, and we need to put the pink back in here. Well, I've really gotten carried away with just the lovely detail that's going on in these flowers, and I'm still not there yet. So it takes a little bit of layering. Let's see more pink. I want to stop and get the green started and then maybe I can come back and put those dark purples in. Really is lovely color in it. Okay, so I need to soften that up with the water. And this one goes kind of out of the picture here. And I'm pretty sure this is another petal. And this needs just to be softened a bit. All right, I, I feel inclined to jump into my um, greens. So, oh well, let's start with some yellow greens. And so I have this lovely yellow green and I'm looking at all the sweet spots of yellow green. I'm not gonna try to mimic everything that's in there because for quite frankly, I want to look at the real McCoy that I photographed. I photographed from the basket in the front yard. So these particular leaves are a light green and some have this little bumpy edge to them. And so I'll start with the fact that they do have a little edge to them that they are a light green in most cases and that there is a center line coming down this <laughs> that little middle vein and uh, maybe just for the sake of time i'll just hit hit the greens these stems are maybe going to get a little darker but come down and oh that would have been a flower yes that would have been one of those curled up flowers that came something like this. See? Oh, and speaking of shadows, look at how I'm getting shadows on my paper right now. So you can imagine how these um, shadows would have occurred on a, a white pot or any color pot for that matter. A shadow would, have, would appear just as the darker color. So this is a flower that I'm going to need to put some color on. All right. Wow. So some leaves on flowers take no time at all, but some leaves do take a little bit of time. And we have some, some stems. That's, that's kind of fun, is to show those. I'm lifting this, I'm lifting here. There'll be some flower, uh, excuse me, some leaves that pop out from behind other leaves and so forth and so on. Oh boy. I like having the lines that show the connection between a flower, um, a stem that comes down and hits a, a leaf. Okay, I'm gonna need some darks. I'm gonna definitely need some darks and I feel like putting in some darks right now. So I'm gonna tell you what I did to make this dark. This is really crazy, but this is the purple and the green. And uh, I shouldn't be touching that stem right now. So I want to get some darks in here. And I want to make these flowers do, I really want these flowers to pop. And I can make them really pop by putting this, this contrast around them. Now, 
I could wet my paper. I, I need to have, I need to suggest where my line is. Um, in other words, I don't want that to be in the middle. It's so close to the middle. And I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit more so that, and I just ran over that light green. So I'm gonna get a fuzzy edge out of that. Um, hmm. I want to get some darks in here. And this is where I started the, back, the wet and wet background. So here I'm putting in these, this dark. Okay, I guess my line is going to be somewhere like that. Okay, I feel better about br bringing the line down because I didn't want it to say it was in the middle. And you'll see why um, my idea was to show shadows. Like if this were in a, a flower box and you were, um, you came up to a house and you see these lovely little dainty flowers hanging down and the sun is shining and you have the, the idea of light and dark hitting. And of course, the reason we have this so dark is because it's, it's hidden behind all these little flowers. So there's gonna be some lights and darks popping. Now I'm losing myself in what I'm doing. So um, here, here I can recreate the edge of that leaf with the negative space. And that's too wet right there. So I've got to, I have to lift that up. I mean, maybe I could leave it as a shadow. It's looking pretty good, actually. I could just let that edge go. <laughs> there we go, we got a gray shadow. Wow, sometimes accidents happen and you say, oh, I meant that to be right there. Not really, but I'm glad it happened. All right. Now, I am putting in darks in places that I can change. <clears throat> in other words, I can put in the dark and then I can pick up a lighter color, one of my other greens. And while that's still wet, just finish that up. So there's some variations in that background. This was a stem. I just reduced the size of it a little bit. And what this is doing <laughs> is saying I've got a bunch of leaves back here. And I just put some shadows around those. And um, as, I'm, as I move the brush around, I'm picking, I'm suggesting these little tiny uh, variations that are in these leaves. Here's, here's this edge. And I'm just defining that maybe it needs a touch of dark in there. I have that dark green. Again, I made the dark green by putting the purple and that viridian together. Oh boy, <clears throat> it's the contrast that's gonna make this look good. I'm keeping this edge clean, but I redefined it a little bit. And I'm beginning to wonder, <clears throat> I, don't, I think I need to come back and put, oh, I'm looking at the wrong reference. Uh, here, I probably need to put a uh, little detail into those. They look a little bit flat. And uh, what I wanted to do was to add some contrast here. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to some more green, light green. This is all background and it's blurry. Oof, too, my paint's way too thick. Uh, the, you never wanna put your paint on too thick. You can layer it, but you want to keep um, your watercolor wet and loose and not too heavy. It becomes like acrylic paint if you put it on too thick. You never want to do that. Okay, I'm going to go back into this with some darks. And this is just out of focus. And I still haven't determined what those colors are there. All right. <clears throat> you know, I, I feel like that you're you're getting the picture. I do want to I do want to jump down here, paint this little flower and create a shadow. I think that if I just keep painting, you you will not learn anything new, and that maybe um, the newness will uh, I don't, repetition won't really make it 
easier to finish. I'll finish this and I'll show it to you, but I think I want to get this done. And I want to also talk to you about designing a uh, real quick a sketch. Okay, so this was a purple flower that's rolled up and it, maybe it needs a touch of purple. Maybe it was a, a pink flower. And I'm trying to pick up a touch of purple without getting too well. Okay, maybe, maybe it needs dark here. And then I don't know why I felt inclined to do that. And, and now I'd rather keep it light. Okay. <clears throat> maybe it's because I'm not looking at anything and I'm just guessing. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. I want it to look like this little dried up flower. Okay. And it does, it is pretty pale looking. Okay. So how would I design, looks like I've got a spot of something there. Okay. So how would I design the shadow? <clears throat> so if the light is coming, see, I have this shadow here. So I know the light is coming down like this. Matter of fact, I think it's coming this way because this petal, so I don't want to put the shadow over here. I need to put the shadow on this side. So I'm going to say that this leaf has a shadow, that this leaf has a shadow because it's hanging down, but they're very close to the basket. So all of these leaves are, are having uh, shadows. Now, I, drew, I didn't finish this one. So that one's going to have a little shadow. This one's going to have a little shadow. That one, all of these, and maybe even that flower, maybe these leaves, maybe a little bit from the flower hangs down here. All right, I'm going to have a shadow from this, and it's going to follow the line of the stem, and then it's always going to drop. Uh, so this leaf is going to be here. And then this flower is going to be off the page pretty much with this leaf being about right there. So when I paint that shadow, <clears throat> I'm going to look at shadows, and I know that shadows are blue-gray. And I choose to make them, so this, it's got too much paint or water or something in it. It's, it's a blue-gray. So I'm making all of these shadows. And when they're really close to the object, they would be a little darker. The shadow would be a little darker. Here is the stem. The stem might be close to begin with, but as the flower, I don't know if it would move away from the box. There's the leaf. Here's this leaf. It would pretty much repeat the same shape. And then this flower, usually it gets a little lighter as it comes down. So this, this is how I'm handling the shadows on this white surface. There will be nothing else painted on the white. It's just like a flower box. Although most of the time flower boxes are terracotta or green or brown, but I have seen them white and I love the shadows you find on white surfaces. Okay, this is not finished, absolutely not finished, but I'm going to call that done for the moment. I am going to um, finish that later and show you, but I do want to say that when you are composing, whether you have a photograph or you have uh, a reference look at look at the beautiful shadow we get right here see the color even so maybe you just have examples of flowers to look at um, when you begin this is an awkward photograph actually um, I wonder which way it goes that's interesting I wonder if I could turn it like this I bet I could I bet I could turn it any way I wanted to um, the thing that you want to start with is in, in the design I just finished, I went one, two, three, and then I had a third element, fourth element, excuse me. Um, I, <laughs> I'm thinking about this way. Um, remember your rule of thirds. So if you divide, the, you want to you start here or here or here or here when you are designing anything. 
uh, as a general rule. Now, sometimes flowers are in the middle and um, you, you can't help it, it has to be there. Well, this, this is my rule of thumb that it tends to work for me. And just by suggesting, and then maybe putting my next flower, now there could be some competition here. And that means that if this flower is lightest, this might be my focal point, and for good reason. It's the lighter with the dark around it, and maybe there's a second little flower here, third actually, and maybe it becomes part of this unit. And, and uh, I just sort of say to myself, um, what, what will really be beautiful? <laughs> what, what is going to really catch my eye? This, this I know will be it. And then I don't like this, this stem, it's way too strong. But if it's a shorter stem, <laughs> I think it'd be just right. Uh, and maybe if it has another leaf or two. Now we need to, we need to create um, a movement in this design. And it could be that putting another flower facing in, kind of like talking about the birds. We, we wanted to know, can the birds face each other? Can they face in the same direction? Can they face out? It's sort of the way the bodies are placed that make them work. And the same with um, this arrangement. So uh, I'm not gonna paint this, but I wanted to sort of say, all right, what would make a good design? Now, what I didn't know I was doing, but I create kind of a diagonal movement here. Then I need to counterbalance that movement with maybe um, other flowers that kind of move, help you move back into the design. And it needs some support. It needs something weighty down here. And this could be another flower that sort of looks up into the design. Again, I'm using this reference, but I'm telling you that is not the best composition. So you make up your own. All right, folks, I'm going to say that we're, we're ready to paint and that even though I didn't quite finish this painting today, <clears throat> I've given it a start and my idea was to go across and put it in a pot with shadows. So good luck with your design. If you can find some real pansies or use the references and have fun with designing and keep in mind complementary colors and contrast and have fun. <laughs>